Hello everyone, it's Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing another installment in the Keeping It New with Carrie series. I haven't done one of these videos in a few months and I know that some of you enjoy this series. So today I'm going to go ahead and do another installment. So for my stamp set today, I'm going to be using the Winnie and Walter stamp set called Bed of Roses. And unfortunately, whenever I was linking this particular stamp set uh, and then just in the, for the description below for all of the supplies that I used, I unfortunately could not find the stamp set uh, online. So I don't know if Winnie and Walter did go ahead and discontinue this one or not, but um, I'm sure that you can find something similar by another stamp company if you wanted to use this same stamp set. So what I did off, uh, is go ahead and stamp this image onto a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I did go ahead and boss that w using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and then putting over top some Icicle Embossing Powder by Brutus Monroe. So now what I'm going to do is take my real brush pens from Arteza and I'm going to color in my image. And as some of you know, if you've been watching my videos here lately, I have had some products sent to me directly from Arteza and they did send these to me and I've been trying them out and getting some playtime with them. And I've been really enjoying them quite a bit and I think there's really no difference between these or the zigs so a lot of people have the zigs but I actually have both now thanks for Arteza and I've been really enjoying them they have lots of colors I there's you know um there's no really big differences in either either one uh, of them that I like you know one over the other so what I'm going to do is just get some colors here that I think are going to be really beautiful and bright and why I like to use, um, you know, whenever I'm using these real brush markers like this, I love to emboss my images because it kind of creates a little bit of a well and it adds, it makes coloring these images like this, especially when it's all like a cluster like this, it makes it super easy to color and you don't have to worry about um, the, you know, like, like the colors mixing all that much or, you know, unless you use just a ton of water, which I do not, um, you don't really don't get any of the mixing of the colors too much. So I'm going to, um, kind of, um, you won't unfortunately see all of the coloring because of, um, and I'll be quite transparent with you. I have some issues, uh, with my editing program. If I, if I put the speed on things like this, as far as like coloring, if I speed it up, at a certain rate. For some reason, my video, whenever I'm going to edit it and do a voiceover, my video stops. And um, I can't necessarily do a voiceover <laughs> without me watching the video, you know, to do the voiceover for. So, um, so I had to cut out some of the images. And so you will be, you will get an idea, obviously, of all the colors that I did use, um, and then the order that I used them. But um, but you, you know, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, this is no, you know, nothing groundbreaking as far as the coloring goes. So I hopefully, I'm hoping to get my editing program kind of updated and hopefully that will stop that and it won't be so, <laughs> I have such a difficulty for me whenever I'm editing videos. So anyway, you get the idea and now I'm going to add just a little bit of green to the background here just to break up all this uh, uh, like pastel colors that I have going on. This will kind of bring bring out those colors even more and tie it all together. So the area was just so small that I just went ahead and took my Arteza pen here and just colored it straight in without using my water brush and it worked out really well. So what I did off camera I wanted to actually add um, what I was kind of going for initially was kind of like a a stained glass look but I didn't know if I could actually achieve that with me using the real brush markers because obviously it reacts with moisture so I just kind of set it on adding some shimmer to my image and so off camera there I added you saw that shimmer bottle that I had the shimmer spritz I added that and just kind of took it to my trash can so I wouldn't get shimmer all over the place and I added some shimmer with that so now what I'm going to do is kind of create a frame and I went ahead and die cut a piece of this silver sparkle cardstock from 
um, my favorite things. This is my favorite silver sparkle cardstock, and I'm actually hoarding it <laughs> because it is so hard to get a hold of. Um, every time I go to try to place an order for it, it's always sold out. So I have to really hoard it and uh, get my money's worth out of the pieces that I have. So I went ahead and also die cut um, using those same rectangles dies. I just kind of put two of the same size close together and butted them up to each other and made a, a, a small frame as you can see here. I did this about four more times here with the black card stock and I'm really building up my frame and I'm going to obviously take my liquid glue as you can see and just place some liquid glue and really stack these up and it's going to create a frame and I'm going to put my uh, silver sparkle piece on top of that and it's really going to make that rose um, picture there it's going to make it look like it's kind of set back a little bit and I really wanted to add it's you know initially I wanted to add some like glossy accents or you know something to that effect but I was afraid that if I did that that it would react with the Arteza pens that I used and it would it wouldn't look good after it dried but I'll have to kind of try that you know and see um, I think you know I, I've done that look before but I didn't use pins like the Arteza pins I just use my Copics and I know that that wouldn't react so so now I'm going to work on my sentiment and this comes from my favorite things as well and I'm going to use the sentiment the world needs more you on and to on I'm going to stamp that onto a piece of a scrap black cardstock here the same cardstock that I use to create my frames and I'm going to cover this with my Brutus Monroe alabaster white embossing powder. This is my favorite white embossing powder now. And I really just love the detail that it gives and how smooth that it melts. As well as the icicle too. I love both of those. I love all of the embossing powders from Brutus Monroe. So to cut out my sentiment, I'm going to be using my skinny strips dies here, also from my favorite things. And I'm just going to place that onto my piece of cardstock here and die cut that off. And then now we're going to go ahead and build up our card. And I'm just going to add some foam adhesive directly to the middle of my sentiment. And right on the ends, I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue and kind of suspend my sentiment across that whole entire little um, rose panel there. And I'm going to be placing this onto a black, uh, or my card base is going to be a piece of that same black licorice card stock. So I'm going to get that all it, it, adhered with onto my card base with my liquid glue. And I'm going to add that foam adhesive to my sentiment and then add some liquid glue onto the very end of that sentiment. So if I do put this through the mail, it won't move. So once I do that, my card is pretty much done, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and another look at this stamp set from um, Bunny and Walter. <laughs> and I'm hoping that if y'all wanted to make a similar card, you can find a similar design in, in this roses. I think they're just beautiful to work with. Thank you all so much for watching my channel today. I truly appreciate you, all of you, and I will catch you all in the next video very, very soon.